Um, I want to see how the Dayton woofer reacts to um, drum playback. And we can watch it on here and try to figure out where we're at on this frequency response. And just as kind of a refresher, this is 10 hertz, 20 hertz, 40 hertz, 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 400 hertz. And then I've got this green line set as close to 800 hertz as I possibly can, because that's the crossover point where the woofer is crossing over to the tweeter. So I would assume that you'll hear some, some sound out of the woofer, you know, beyond that, a thousand maybe beyond as it rolls off, but it does roll off. Um, the crossover in this is 6 dB roll off. Um, and then the Dayton woofer, it has a really sharp roll off about, I want to say it's just about 1000 or a little bit beyond. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and watch it. Just for kind of fun to see where we're at with this frequency band and show you how it reacts um, as we're hearing music play over that woofer. So before we actually do the frequency um, test, I'm going to just explain what I got going on. It's a unidirectional mic and it's uh, pretty close to being centered with that woofer. So uh, the other thing that I've got is if you remember these increments, 10 hertz, 20 hertz, 40 hertz, 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 400 hertz, and then I've got the crossover, this green line here set at 800, really close to it, it's at 809, that was as close as I could make it, but that's where the crossover point is from woofer to tweeter, and the woofer probably rolls off beyond that, obviously, probably past a thousand as the tweeter is picking up the rest. So this is the area that we want to watch though, from the green on back, okay?
got, just pick a, a datum here, a baseline. We'll go with this negative 30 line. So if we choose that line as our datum, this is 40 hertz. So we're st starting out at 40 hertz. We've got a about 5 dB bump here at uh, roughly say 60, 70. And then it continues along. And this is quite literally plus minus, oh plus minus I'd say about uh, 4 dB all the way to here. We're getting into this crossover region here and we got a little, a little wonkiness going on. Um, it's, a, it's picking up. And I'm not exactly sure what's causing that crossover. Obviously crossover. Um, this frequency response of this woofer happens to be a little bit weird. It's got kind of a, a double hump to it before it drops off sharply like after a thousand. So it may be just on the downside right before the mid-range picks it up. I'm, I'm really not sure, but this is a really close measurement on that. Um, I was considering Zobel Network on the mid-range to try to see if that transition is any better. The other thought that I had was also trying to run the woofer uh, just direct, the way that's old school, is just run it direct right off the positive and negative and don't even worry about the highs on it. Um, just let it roll off naturally. Like I say, this has a really, really steep roll off. Um, so not overly concerned about it. So uh, what's next? Um, we've taken that measurement and this is the Dayton woofer with the Zobel in the cabinet that has less stuffing. Everything else is the same. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pause this and I'm gonna go ahead and just put the plain old Dayton driver without a Zobel network in the old cabinet or in the other cabinet that's got the Jensen in it. I'll swap out the Jensen with the Dayton and that's it. I'm not gonna change the insulation. I'm not gonna put a Zobel on it and I wanna see how it compares to this.
so this is the, the Dayton woofer nose oval in the cabinet with more stuffing. And I guess this is the area that I'm really talking about here. And I lost my sweep when I closed the lid on the computer earlier, so I couldn't have it to compare again. Anyway, this is the Dayton woofer with out his elbow with all the insulation. And we're looking at, again, if we use this minus 30 as our starting point, this one started picking up, oh, actually just, just after, for more like 50. Interesting. And carried really smooth through here to about oh, 600. And their crossover network is here. And now we're getting this, this spike there right before the uh, crossover. That'll be interesting to compare to it, to the one that's got the Zobel. Picks up right at 40. It does seem to come down just maybe just a tick more. We'll have to compare them. This is all pretty smooth. And then it's got some weird behavior right here, right before the crossover again. This was certainly a close call. There's really very little difference in here. I think it got tighter along this line, and I think this was just a hair louder. But I'll have to just look at the charts side by side to tell it's really a close call. So next, what are we gonna do next? Uh, we wanna try to get more bass out of this guy. Um, I wanna see if the crossover is holding it back um, before I go messing with the port. I'm gonna just uh, bypass the crossover and go direct to the positive input. Then everything else is just gonna go up upstairs there. So we'll do that next on this speaker since you know the differences were not that great. So um, and we don't have the Zobel to to be concerned about. So basically we'll just be running a straight woofer direct. 